All rise. I want viewers watching my show to believe in themselves. Judge Hatchet is compelling. I was not the first one to throw a walk. Let me just tell you what you just said. Compassionate. I really enjoy being a judge. Now I am touching people who I will never know I touch. She's powerful. You should have never let them walk out of your life when she was three. And she's on the bench. Don't get me preaching up in here today. Right. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchet. Jennifer Hopkins is suing hair salon owner Jasmine Miller in the amount of $4,000. Ms. Hopkins claims Ms. Miller's employee gave her a straightening treatment, which caused permanent damage to her hair. Ms. Miller claims the plaintiff didn't give a complete history of her recent hair treatments and says she's not responsible for the damage. Ms. Hopkins, you are suing the defendant, Ms. Miller, for some $4,000 because you're saying that you received services at her hair salon that just completely destroyed your hair. Talk to me about what happened, please. So I went to the Beliza salon um, to get a Japanese hair straightening treatment. And a month later, my hair started falling out in clumps. And I went back to them to show them what happened. I was very upset, um, I think as anyone would be and they gave me a gift certificate and Jasmine cut my hair again and she cut it all off and my hair has never grown back. As you can see, I wore it down today so you could see what it really looks like. So you can tell um, right here is where my uh, natural hair has stopped growing and then the longer parts are the extensions. And that happened two years ago, but my hair has never grown back. And I've been spending thousands and thousands of dollars trying to fix my hair. I'm, I work in marketing and the way you present yourself, the way you market yourself matters. And if I can't market myself, how do you expect someone to believe I can market their product? And so it's completely destroyed my self-confidence. I mean, would you be confident with this hair? And I, it takes me so long to get ready in the morning. I did it in order to make that process faster. Um, and uh, my mom always taught me about the importance of the way you present yourself. She had, it really mattered to her how, how I looked, and I just look horrible every day. All right, Ms. Miller, so she comes to your salon. Yes, ma'am. Now, this Japanese hair straightening, I, I'm not familiar with that. What kind of service is that, please? It is a very extensive treatment to straighten curly hair. It takes seven hours for this. Seven hours? Seven hours, yes, ma'am. It is a very... Seven hours? It is a very detailed process. It requires us putting lots of chemicals on your hair and working with you. And that is why we do an extensive consultation first before we ever work with your hair. And she came in for that consultation. And this is the Silas who's yes, in the courtroom? Yes, this is Ginger. All right, Ginger, if you'll stand up, please. So, come and, come and join um, Ms. Miller. So, Ms. Chan, you were the Silas who provided this service yes, to the is plaintiff. Correct. Is that correct? That is correct. And so she came in, and what did she say to you? Um, she said that um, I had asked her a series of questions, and she said that she received a Brazilian treatment prior. Now, what's a Brazilian treatment prior? Um, it's kind of like kind a deep of... conditioning. It's more of like a relaxer, like a, like a deep conditioner. All right, so she said that she had had a Brazilian treatment. Correct. Now, let me ask you, so do you have to have this consultation because this is such an extensive treatment? Yes. yes. Uh, seven hours. I'm still stuck on the seven hours, yes. <laughs> having to sit there for seven hours. Yes. Um, I did not say a Brazilian. I said a keratin treatment. Now, what's the keratin treatment? The keratin treatment is more intense, and so that's why I was concerned about doing the Japanese hair straightening so soon after the keratin. I'd had it three months prior. So in my consultation, I first chatted with Ginger. I let her know I had the keratin treatment. She said it'd be fine, but let me double check with my, the owner of the salon, Jasmine. She checked with Jasmine, and she said I'd be a perfect candidate. So a week later, I came in for the, the treatment. Jasmine, what happened? Well, she came in and she spoke with Ginger, and Ginger asked her extensive questions about her hair. Because before we do a procedure like this, which we already told you takes seven hours. I, we, I mean, I, just the seven hours stuff, I'm just... Yeah. All right, all right, yeah. It's ahead. a lot, and that's why we want to make sure we know what's going on. And we rely on the customer to truly tell us what's going on with her hair. She told Ginger that she had had a Brazilian treatment. Very minor procedure. You can wash your hair, you can put it up in a ponytail the same night, whatever. But... 
Ginger came to me because she was still concerned, and because I've been doing this a long time, we have an excellent reputation. I went and I also spoke to Ms. Hopkins, and she told me that she'd had a Brazilian hair treatment. Okay, there's no problem with that. We did it. She was very happy. Her hair looked magnificent. She left our salon. We thought we had another satisfied customer. So this, she said there was some treatment that started with a K. What kind of treatment? Yeah, it's called a keratin. And a month keratin. later, yes, ma'am, a month later, treatment. she shows up at my salon yelling at me and Ginger that we should have known better than to do this Japanese treatment after she'd received a keratin. I mean, we were shocked. That was the first time we ever heard her say anything about a keratin. So if you had known it was a keratin, yes. would you have provided this service? No. no. Coming up on The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. I'm not trying to make a problem for everyone, but now after two years, my hair doesn't grow past my shoulders. These wispy parts are all that I have. And later. At the time of the viewing of the apartment, we verbally said to Mr. Helen that we are in the market. Yes, we were very interested in his unit, but that doesn't mean to take it off the market. We didn't say we're going to get it today. Closed captioning provided by... If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Jennifer Hopkins, who is suing Jasmine Miller for $4,000. So, was the keratin treatment intense? Is that um, an intense treatment? It's a kind of an intense treatment, nothing like the Japanese hair straining, though. And you're saying that had you known that she had had a keratin, that you would have never given her this treatment. Correct. That is correct. And it's why too, is that? Too many chemicals. Too many chemicals, probably and it's really too hard short on hair, and, and too, too short, short a span. time. Yes, correct. So now she comes back and she's saying, oh my goodness, you ruined my hair. What did you do? Well, she came in and I felt sorry for her and I felt bad I for her. Too. You know, and we pride ourselves on having very satisfied customers. Yeah, because so, you won't be in business very exactly, long if you exactly. don't. And we mean, are you've got to have good service. Yes, mm -hmm. we are one of the top salons in the area. We give excellent service. And when she came in, you know, I don't know what she's done to her hair before. And when she came in screaming at me that she'd had the keratin, I told her I would have never allowed this procedure to you be done on know, you if you had a keratin. You didn't know what I had done to my hair before because no. that's what the consultation was for. We came yes. in, I sat down with both you and Ginger. That's what the consultation was for. we talked about consultation. So you 100% yes. did have my hair history because well, that's no, what that you, was for. You didn't give us the correct hair history. If you had given us the correct hair history, we would never have done the Japanese hair. I 100% told on you, you I had a keratin treatment. You so told us you had the Brazilian. Did, how much did this treatment cost at your salon? The treatment, I actually was running a special, and so we were get, doing this treatment for $500. But when she came back, I felt bad, so I said, okay, I'll give you $700 worth of services. That's $200 more than she had paid me because I was trying to be generous and I was trying to help her. I also told her, let me fix your hair. Let me cut your hair for you and style it so it'll look nice until it grows back, and then come back for some more services so we can fix your hair. And I never heard from her again. Then two years later, she's calling me into court wanting $4,000 for future hair care. So tell me about this $4,000. How did you come up with $4,000? Um, Your Honor, it's not future hair care. Um, I have evidence right here of the receipts over the past two years that I've been paying on my hair. So this is not the future. This is the current amount of money I've spent on my hair. I'm not asking for the future. Let me see these charges. But in the meantime, let me ask you. Thank you. Jennifer, why didn't you go back to the original salon and say, look, you gave me this treatment, I paid for the keratin treatment, but my hair is not done satisfactory. Why didn't you go back there and say, look? Because I'm not a complainer. They did what they, they tried to do and it, and it didn't work. But the, uh, and the reason I've waited so long is because I've been trying to deal with my hair myself. I'm not trying to make a problem for everyone. But now, after two years, my hair doesn't grow past my shoulders. These wispy parts are all that I have. And so now, I'm spending over about $2,000 a year for hair upkeep, and that's why I'm here now today. Because how many more years am I going to spend $2,000 a year on my hair? But, Your Honor, may I say that yes. I should not have... I don't know what kind of chemicals she's putting on her hair now. I use high-quality products. I don't know what she's using high since she left products my to make your salon. Hair fall out. And now, because she had some kind of issue, she's decided that, like my ex-husband, I'm going to have to pay the rest of my life for her, too, because she has chosen inferior products. I'm expected to pay. Maybe I mean, you're just not very good at the services you offer. We are excellent at the services. If you check our Yelp reviews, we have had nothing but five-star results. 
Ginger gets excellent reviews from everybody. She is the only one who has ever come to us with a complaint. And it is only yeah, because, because she why? didn't give us the right information in the first place. If she had told us the truth at the very beginning, none of this would have happened. All right, I'm gonna rule on this, but let me just say this. Ms. Hopkins, did it ever occur to you that maybe you should have done some research to say maybe I just had this perm three months ago and before I go in and try to do something else, that maybe I ought to look at what happens. I have this keratin perm. What would happen if I went to have a Japanese perm? Because I just, I don't believe that they would have given you this service under these circumstances. And they strike me as very, very, very credible. And frankly, and it, and it pains me to even say this to you, you strike me as being very desperate to do something about your hair. And I don't know that you are not completely honest with them because you were so desperate and you were like, okay, I gotta do something, I gotta do something, so I won't really tell them everything that happened. I'll just kinda say I had a Brazilian treatment done so I can get this because I think you were desperate to try to look better. And in the process of that, it just made things so much worse. Your Honor, it I was did. truthful with them. Well, listen, I don't, I don't believe you were. I think that you were desperate. I think you went in there. I think you tried to get this service done because you wanted to have a perfected appearance for your job, and I get that. I get that. Listen, I've had some jacked up hair mm -hmm. cuts in my life. You know, I mean, I, I have, and I know how it feels when your hair is not the way it should be. I mean, I've had a few. And I know what that's like. I mean, it's just like, oh my goodness. It's the like everything is all anxiety. off. I know it's all off. But you know, to come in now, two years later, and say you want her to pay $4,000, it's just not gonna happen. I'm gonna dismiss your case. That's my final ruling. We'll stand adjourned. All rise. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been denied. Thanks to you, I have to spend thousands of dollars on hair extensions for the rest of my life. We offered you a remedy. I'm sorry it didn't work out for you. Coming up. We didn't say we're gonna get it today. There was no credit check, there was no background check. We didn't even sign anything. Closed captioning provided by. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. Carl Helen is suing Jenny and Rob Dirksen in the amount of $2,200. Mr. Helen claims he lost potential tenants after the co-defendants put money down to hold an apartment, but backed out of the deal. The Dirksons claim they only asked Mr. Helen to hold the apartment for 48 hours while they looked at other properties and had not entered into a binding contract. Mr. Helen, you are suing the Dirksons, and you're saying that they owe you $2,200 dollars because they breached their agreement to lease an apartment from you. Is that correct? That is correct. Tell Your me Honor. what happened, please. Basically, on August uh, 19th, I put out an ad uh, to rent the room, and uh, the defendant came over, and uh, I showed them the apartment, and they totally fell in love with it. So I told them that if, I, if they wanted me to hold it for them, that they would have to give me a $200 deposit. And without any hesitation, the gentleman there was like, here it is. Later that day, I texted them and I said, I have put the apartment on hold. I have the uh, texts right here if you'd like to see them. Yes, I would like to see would you those. Like to that? And their response was very positive. Look at it. They even sent me, what do you call the M Emojis? Emoji, emojis, yes. Emojis with bottles of champagne and the, the glasses and the smiley faces. So I believe I've rented the place out, so I took it off the market. All right, Mr. Dirksen, Ms. Dirksen, what happened? Well, basically, what the, the fin what the, Mr. Helen is saying is correct. We did love what we saw. We they had the view, the amenities, everything was fine. We, um, so what went wrong? Well, Your Honor, I'll tell you what went wrong. That day, upon leaving the apartment, we actually spoke to a few of the residents there. Um, we spoke to one gentleman that was in the laundry facility, and we were just asking questions whether, how is the environment in the apartment? And he was like, it's fine. He just mentioned something about the weekly potluck, and we were just like, 
What's that about? Coming up. At the time of the viewing of the apartment, we verbally said to Mr. Helen that we are in the market. Yes, we were very interested in his unit, but that doesn't mean to take it off the market. We didn't say we're going to get it today. Closed captioning provided by. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Carl Helen who is suing Jenny and Rob Dirksen for $2,200. So now you're talking to people, and you're right. kind of getting a feel for what it would be like to live in this apartment, right. and what else happened? Basically, um, after the daily part, like we left, and we were on positive terms. It wasn't until the conversation that we had later, where we were discussing the following day, we were saying, um, I was expressing how much I did love the apartment, and then he went on to say something along the lines of, welcome to our family, uh, can't wait to have you. And I mean, I'm not saying that we're not friendly or not approachable, but the family thing just left me at a, it made me feel uncomfortable personally. All right. Mr. Dirksen, let me hear from you. When you all left and you gave the $200 to Mr. Helen, what was your understanding at that point about the $200? Well, that $200... And why did you give him the $200? Oh, well, that $200 would be um, in place for just for holding the apartment. And for how long <laughs> was your understanding that the apartment would be 48 held? 48 hours, that, uh, the max. That was to our understanding. It was not clear as to how long the holding fee was for in place. Um, so at the time of the viewing of the apartment, we verbally said to Mr. Helen that we are in the market looking for other properties. Yes, we were very interested in his unit, but that doesn't mean to take it off the market. We didn't say we're going to get it today. There was no credit check. There was no background check. We didn't even sign anything. We just came to look at it. We so was there an things. application process no, where yeah. there was no application? It was supposed to be done the next day. It's supposed Your to Honor. be done the next day. Right. Yes. Whoa. Judge Hatchett's verdict when we return. Promotional consideration provided by... You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. Why wouldn't you just let him know? Well, Your Honor, it went on to harassing text message where... How so? Well, yeah. I have the documents right here. May I give it to you? Yes. Okay. Well, at first it's like, hey, can you come sign the lease? Hey, when are you going to come to apartment? And then, you know, he put it in caps locks like, hey, come, come, more come. Aggressive right. and more, more aggressive as, as the days went on. Let me just say, let me just say this. Your testimony was that you were expecting the apartment to be held for 48 hours. Correct. Correct. Based on this $200. Correct. Why let this go on for two weeks? I don't get it. I don't understand how you would just let this go on. There's a certain right. standard of decency. Right. I do understand. Play. That That was our part that we, we neglected. You we, did. We did. You did. You did. But now let me tell you, Mr. Helen, having said that, I'm not going to award you $2,200 because you are a businessman. And... It did not seem reasonable to me that you would think that $200 was a deposit if you didn't have a written agreement. You don't have legal standing to now charge them with this lawsuit and expect to recover $2,200. Nothing further. We'll stand adjourned. All rise. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the co-defendants. The plaintiff's claim has been denied. You could have at least let me know that you were not interested. You're a businessman. Don't make assumptions. This has been a production of Entertainment Studios.